Hello, friends, and welcome into the 49ers Report. I am Tom Downey, subbing in today for Thomas Mott. We're going to preview the Vikings 49ers playoff matchup, plus talk some injury updates on Quan Alexander, D. Ford, and some other players. But we begin with the match the Niners have this upcoming weekend in the NFC Divisional Round. The Vikings are coming to town fresh off a stunning upset victory in overtime against the New Orleans Saints. So because the NFL reseeds in the playoffs, the Niners automatically get the lowest seed available. And you can go no lower than the last wild card team, the number six Minnesota Vikings. Therefore, they're coming to town. That will be on Saturday for the 49ers. Now, we do have the early betting odds for you guys as well. The over-under set at 45.5. The Niners are a seven and a half point favorite. That is very similar to what the Saints opened up as in terms of the betting line when it first came out. It was about a seven point spread in favor of the Saints. Niners, a little bit better than the Saints, a little bit higher odds. Although the Vikings have already proven they can pull off the upset. And before we talk more about this game, I want you guys watching to predict the score. I know you're all gonna take San Francisco, I am as well, but I want you guys to predict the exact score of this game. So if you're watching on YouTube, you might get an ad break here. So if you do, scroll down to the pinned comment. That's where I want you to put your score predictions for the Niners and the Vikings. If you missed it today, or, or I should say Sunday if you're watching later on in the week, what an incredible game this was. Saints-Vikings goes to overtime. The Saints, they fumble the ball and they could have taken the lead late. They get the ball back. They get a field goal. Minnesota marches down the field. Kirk Cousins hits a deep ball to Adam Thielen and then eventually throws the game-winning score. The Saints offense struggled in this one. Uh, Drew Brees, not of his, his normal game. Taysom Hill was the linchpin for a lot of the offensive success for New Orleans, which is weird, right? It's not how it's normally supposed to be. So Minnesota, a about seven point underdog, totally flips the script and they upset the 49ers or the Saints on the road. Now they get to play the 49ers. Now comparing these two offenses, we'll do averages and just the team ranks as well, so you can get a little more insight here. The Niners, pretty much across the board, except for turnovers, have had the better offense this year than Minnesota. That ground game for San Francisco, yes, there's no Dalvin Cook. Has it really mattered? Green Moser, Devin Coleman, Matt Breida, everybody's contributed to a very dynamic ground game. And although there have been some turnovers by one Jimmy Garoppolo, he's made plenty of plays for this team as well. And Kirk Cousins coming off a yeah, potentially game which you get the gets the uh, schneid off him if you will it's not really the right phrase but whatever the, the heavy burden that cousins had carried for not doing well on the road not doing well in the prime time this was technically not not a prime time game and the vikings go on the road for their first playoff win since i believe 2009 is that or five 2005 thank you for this really shit for having the exact stat there points per game this niners team has been really good you better believe that as long as the ground game is clicking and I think it should for San Francisco. Works against about pretty much anybody. That will set up the effective play action. Frankly, both these teams kind of like to use play action and run the football a lot. Now, again, the Niners are a seven and a half point favorite. So if you're feeling good or even just think they're going to win outright money line wise, put your money where your mouth is on BetDSI. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet. Use the promo code you see on your screen. It's just 49ers. That's it. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code 49ers. It gets you a 120% deposit bonus. Shotsports.com slash bet. Promo code 49ers. It's extra money. Perfect timing now with playoff football here. Defensively, there are some similarities here again. We just saw Minnesota totally shut down the Saints offense. The points per game, and then you compare it to the yardage, it is a little bit different for these two teams in terms of the effectiveness. The Vikings are pretty similar there in the ground game. Vikings allowing a lot more total yards. The Niners, and especially the past couple of weeks where there have been injuries, more on that coming up in a second. Don't you guys worry. But I think between the two defenses, I'm going to take San Francisco every single time. I know the points per game are a little bit lower. I understand that. I think the turnovers are certainly a factor in there. Both of these teams, great takeaway teams. They, they force turnovers. That's a big deal in today's NFL. But with the Niners getting healthier and healthier and healthier, at least on defense, at least they appear to be going, going that way. I put the edge in favor of San Francisco. Plus, you know, they're at home. Now, talking historically here, the last five meetings hasn't gone that great for San Francisco. Now, these teams 
actually didn't play anywhere near as often as you might have thought, but the Vikings have won three out of the last five, and if you only go back to 2007, it's really been three out of the last four. The Niners, meanwhile, coming in, they got a pretty good pretty good spot. Yeah, they lost to the Falcons in Week 16, whatever. They beat the Rams. They beat the Seahawks, two very close games, and the Saints. So they've been tested. They have been battle-tested this year. Look at that. The last couple of games, they've all been one-score games. Kind of crazy how that works out. Now the defense is getting healthier, you're not going to be giving up 48 points to the Saints this time. A, they're out of the playoffs. B, Vikings not as good offensively as the Saints normally have been so far this year. The Vikings, meanwhile, the critical wild card win. Before that, there was some buzz about them backing into the postseason. Well, they, they lost to Green Bay. That one was certainly tough. But they also didn't try against the Chicago Bears. That, that was a rest most of your starters game. They got Dalvin Cook back. That was clearly a big boost for the for, for the Vikings offensive attack. Not the same caliber opponents the, the 49ers have faced as of late, but there's a reason they're going to be one of four NFC teams alive when, by the time these two teams play. They're one of the best left in the NFL. Now, if you're a 49ers fan, you need to subscribe to us here at youtube.com slash 49ers TV. As many of you subscribers already know, Thomas Mon has you covered on rumors news, grades, live Q&A. We keep you covered here on the 49ers Report, and you best believe we're not going anywhere now. That is playoff time, and you know, the offseason coming up as well. Let's move on now and discuss the very important injury notes on San Francisco. I begin with Quan Alexander. How awesome is this? And my hope here initially, by the way, is that the NFL media that worshipped at the feet of J.J. Watt, under, understandably so, gives Quan Alexander the same credit. He's covering back from a torn pec, a partial torn pectoral muscle, suffered way back in November. In most cases, basically except for J.J. Watt and Quan Alexander, that's season-ending injury. You, you don't come back from that. But now, he is not just a chance. He might actually be trending towards being able to play in this upcoming game. Practice Thursday, practice Friday as well. That's a huge boost for the 49ers. And look, they got by at linebacker. Fred Warner's played great this year. Dre Greenlaw's made some plays. But getting back Quan Alexander, even for what, 50% of the snaps, that's a huge addition for this team. And for the 49ers, the Vikings love to run the football. You're going to probably play your base defense a little bit more than maybe you otherwise would against, let's say, I don't know, the Chiefs or the Saints, for example. Vanessa likes to run the football. You can have your linebackers out there. Getting back Quan Alexander just in time for a, a true playoff and not just playoff, Super Bowl push, that is a big deal. That is a really big deal for San Francisco. I am fired up about it. I know Quan is well. Assuming, of course, he's able to play. It's not quite 100% locked, but that is the way things appear to be trending. So how excited are you? about Alexander's return. Rate this for me on a scale of one to 10. That's the normal amount we use here. One to 10 makes it easy. I'll break the rules if you guys don't tell anybody. You can put down 100 if you want. Like, I, am, I am super pumped up for the, to, for the Niners to get back Alexander. Getting this incredible defense healthy, that's gonna make it an entertaining game, right? And is that all what we want? Also got a deal for you guys if you're fired up about the Niners winning the NFC West, but also if you want more. Head over to chatsports.com slash NFC West from our friends over at Fanatics. That shirt right there, $27.99. Perfect little shirt to wear during the game, for example. Also, if that's not quite your style, maybe you want a hat or a t-shirt or a shoes or a jersey or whatever, still go to the same link and then just look up other options there. There is other gear up to 30% off right now, but that t-shirt is available at chatsports.com slash NFC West. And by the way, check the description, check the comments. It will be in there for you guys as well. Just a click, no quick. All right, more injury updates here. D Ford, who has been dealing with that hamstring injury for quite a while, much like Alexander, expected to return for the NFC divisional game against the Minnesota Vikings. This might even be a bigger boost than Quan Alexander just because of what the 49ers want to do on defense. You love to have pass rush. The Saints really didn't get consistent pass rush, I didn't think, against Kirk Cousins. But when the Niners have D Ford and when they have Nick Bosa, when they have Eric Armstead and, and DeForest Buckner, oh my God, it's not fair. It's not fair. Now, Sheldon Day will be out there on, on in base defense looks, and 
maybe D Ford is more of a rotational guy and they roll with Bosa and Armstrong. Armstead, they bring in D Ford on passing downs. But I want to include Ford and Bosa in here. When everyone's healthy and playing at their highest level, this is a very dangerous and frankly one of the most dangerous fronts in the NFL. Now, D Ford, you look at his sack numbers, only 16.5. I think the pressures of him have been really impressive this year for Ford. And if you give him the extra five games, he's probably at like eight. Maybe he's even up to nine there. I think it's a lucky break here or there. He's had a good year, D. Ford has. It helps what almost hurts Ford, helps the Niners that D. Ford and or that, that Nick Bosa and, and, and DeForest Buckner also get to the quarterback really, really quickly. And that works out really well overall for the 49ers defense. But I am curious what you guys think about this, and I, I want to see your results. Who's more important to this Niners defense? Type F for Ford, A for Alexander. Look, they're both great players. They're both important. I would almost wonder if, for the overall playoffs, if D Ford is more important. And I also wonder if for maybe, say, the Ravens, a potential Ravens matchup, if Quan Alexander might play a bigger role in that particular game than what the Ravens like to do on offense. Just throwing that out there. All right, one last injury note here that's on Tart. Dealing with broken ribs since week 13. Limited in practice on Friday. It would appear he, I thought he was going to be able to go week 17, to be honest. And then he kind of didn't make progress as expected and did not play there. If he can play in the playoffs, that's another starter back to this defense. And another starter, much like Alexander, that will really help you against tight ends, which the Vikings like to use, and against the run game. Getting back another starter there, that's a huge deal for me. Now, now, I like Tart more near the line of scrimmage. He's not really a single high, which is fine. That's not the end of the world. That's just his role. And you're going to play a run team against the in the Minnesota Vikings. We'll see who they draw potentially in, in the NFC Championship game. But maybe you get the Ravens in the postseason. Getting back Tark out, Tart out there, getting back Alexander, that's a big deal for me. And if you have a healthy secondary, a healthy linebacking core, and a healthy defensive line, all of a sudden, just like that, the Niners defense that was, if not the best, was one of the best top two, top three units in the NFL for the forced first 60-ish percent of the season. Now everybody else gets healthy. That's perfect timing for the 49ers as they make their Super Bowl 54 run.